Okay, campers, it's time for summer brand camp. Consider this your brand camp orientation. Um, or winter, if you're tuning in for from another hemisphere. Just putting that out there. This is a four-ish month crash course in getting your brand up and running and in good shape by August. Let's go. A little about me. I've been working in social media and marketing since 2013. I did a lot of unpaid marketing work before then that was part of internships and other things. But since then, I've been working on anything from film releases, newsrooms, nonprofits, and a ton in between. I've worked on a variety of brands, and that's the knowledge I'm bringing to this talk. So that doesn't mean this is the only way to do any of this work. This is, is not by any means the one and only way. You can do whatever you like with this. There's a ton of resources out there. Everyone does this differently. But I wanted to share some of my background with you so you know what to expect and where I'm coming from in my experience. This presentation is mainly made for Cozy presenters, but all this info is actually very usable if you aren't part of Cozy. Um, so stay tuned and see if any of this is helpful for you. What is Cozy? Um, it stands for Costume Symposium and is this year's virtual gathering for costuming YouTubers. Last year, you might have known it as CoCovid, um, but this year it's gone for a rebrand. It's the same awesome and supportive community, but it's just a new name. So Cozy is happening August 19th through 22nd on YouTube, and that's less than 100 days away. All free, all on YouTube, all by the creative brains behind Costume. So make sure that you are following the Instagram account for updates and programming info. It's at Costume Symposium, and I can't wait to see you all there. So Cozy is going to be a major community event, and I thought it'd be great that we make sure we hit the ground running because this is not only a chance to introduce folks to the work that you do, um, but it's a chance to grow your brand and your following in this really cool community moment. So I've put together my quick and dirty path that you see here that I'm gonna go through today. This is a quick way to prep your brands and platforms for August. It's a less than four month plan and you do not have to do all of it or any of it, but just in case, I'm gonna talk to you about it and walk you through the basics. So your camp schedule, it's four-ish months and it's to get your channel and brand ready for Cozy or other projects if you're not doing Cozy. Think of it as putting your best foot, foot forward. And I like to think of it as like the dream scenario where you've not only remembered to clean your sewing machine, but also change out the needle before your next project. So it's work now, but it totally pays off in the long run and you'll thank yourself later. Again, you can feel free to take or leave any of this. Um, some of this advice maybe you've already tried and it doesn't work for you and that's fine. I would say think of this as a buffet of options. You can take what you think works for your plate. And if your plate is too full, you don't need to add any of this right now. If later on your plate has less on it and you think that you can add more to it, definitely come back, add some of this to your plate and see how it works for you. So again, reminder, this is just one way to do this work. You can mix and match. You can ignore some of this. You can run with some of this. There are tons of ways to go about optimizing your brand and your content. This is a quick guide to this. And most of this advice is aimed at the kind of larger picture of all your social platforms, not just YouTube but there's definitely overlap with YouTube. So you're going to see that all through this pr presentation. Okay, campers, time to pick your activities. Now, this is up to you. Again, you can go with all the summer activities. You can go with none of the winter activities. And this is all to help your brand. And ultimately, helping your brand helps all of us. So putting all of our brands in the spotlight and for Cozy and at this one moment is really great, but it also means we can all help each other by like being as optimized as possible so that people can find all of our content and find all the work that we're doing together. And a reminder, you don't want to take on too much work. Like you don't, you're not Hermione. You don't somebody who has like a million hours of time. Um, and 
you just need to really take it easy on yourself too, because you're already creating content on top of wanting to do work around your brand. So I'd say, just be realistic about your time commitments. Don't stress. This thing's to be fun. So let's dive in. Okay, May, your goal is branding. There's not much time left in May. And the reason why branding is here is because this is just a reminder to get this done. This is probably stuff that's been on your to-do list forever, but you've been meaning, you've been meaning to do it. You just haven't had a chance to do it. This is your sign. If you've been waiting for a sign to clean up your brand, this is it right here. So cleaning up your brand mainly means making it consistent and making it easy to find because you want yourself to be found, right? Right off the top, here are my top to-do list items for branding. Icons, make them consistent across all of your platforms. It's the easiest signal to folks that they're in the right place when they're searching for your content. A link tree or whatever other link listing service you prefer, that's the thing that you can just pop all your social links into, and then you have that one link that you can put in all of your social profiles because not all social profiles that you put in multiple links you just pop the one in there and that's where people can find all of your stuff. It's a great one-stop shop and then you don't have to worry about it unless you're updating what links are there and what order they're in. So get that done as well. It's really important that people know how to follow you. Headers. Not all platforms need headers and YouTube is notoriously finicky about their header size, but I still really suggest you get these to be consistent looking across the pages that you use on social, including YouTube. It's just another visual indicator that folks have found the correct channel or platform that you're on. And there are some that have extra space in them that you could add other info about like what your channel is about or when people can tune in to your live content or your regularly scheduled content. So consider that just another free space for you to advertise what you do on your profile. Brand colors, fonts, etc. This is just the nicest and best way to keep your brand looking nice and consistent and polished. You should decide on your colors, whether you're using Pantone or HTML codes, get those codes down so that you can have consistent colors across the board. Same for fonts. Decide what fonts you wanna use for headings versus subtitles versus what body text, have those down. In wording, wording is going to be thinking that we talk about a lot around other spaces, whether it's share lines or tags or whatever, we'll get to that. But I definitely think that like having an idea of how you talk about your channel, uh, you know, a four sentence, you know, four sentences about what your channel is, one sentence about what your channel is, having those be consistent so you can elevate or pitch your channel is going to be really crucial. And it, have this in one place so it's easy to reference. I keep most of this stuff either in a Google Doc because it's digital and I can get that anywhere, or I use the Canva Pro feature that lets me just make all that on the back end so I can reference it on every canvas that I use. So many tips. Here are all the tips that I have for polishing your brand and optimizing your time. Name. Make your name consistent across all the platforms. I know it sounds silly, but do it. It makes it easier to find you when people search for you, and you want to make sure that that's the same name that you are verbally saying in your videos, too. Optimize your description. Spend some time making sure your channel and profile wording is consistent and optimize. So what do I mean when I say optimize? That means making sure, at least for right now, that you are concisely describing your channel and what content you post and why people should follow you. So just keep that really consistent and concise and you don't have a ton of space all the time for that. So make sure that you're not using too many filler words, get to the point, let people know what this is about. We'll work more on optimization on SEO a little bit later. Boilerplates. So this is just another name for a copy paste document. Whether it's answering the same questions over and over again, like what sewing machine do you use? What camera do you use? or just having your optimized video description credits, like how you lay out your, your video description. Um, having those be consistent is great, but this step also having that copy paste document helps cut time. It helps keep your stuff looking great, but it also really cuts on time. Most of us know that tags are critical, but I think the big thing is how can you make this step easier? I say keep a document or save them in a preset kind of space. I use vidIQ to save mine. It makes that easier and it keeps you consistent. 
it's also a really good way for you to test what keywords are doing well for you and what may need tweaking. So keeping track of your tags is really crucial for you just knowing what's working, what's not, what to get rid of, what to work on. VidIQ. It is free to download the Chrome extension, and I highly recommend you download it and use it to help you optimize your videos. It has a bunch of freebies. People use other things as well that are similar. My go-to is vidIQ. I've used it for work. I've used it for brands. I say go for it. Try it out. See if it works for you. Thumbnail testing. This is a great time to perfect your video thumbnails if you haven't already. Give yourself time to test out not only how different thumbnails perform on social, um, like the video thumbnail, but also um, get a workflow down. So it doesn't have to be a hard step during the upload process because it's always a pain during the upload. So have that down now. Scheduling. So if you're using non-YouTube channels to cross promote your uploads and projects, figure out a social scheduling app that works for you. This could be really great for cutting down your time that you spend on daily social if that's a thing that you need to cut down on because you can just bulk upload and bulk schedule. Hootsuite is my go-to free platform for this for multiple um, accounts, but it only includes so many and it only does so many freebie um, posts. So just keep a lookout for the thing that works for you. This is constantly changing. The pricing points are constantly changing. Some are still free, some are not. So I'd say just look for social schedules that work for you. Um, I also use my Canva Pro account for my Instagram and I'm going to add my other platforms to it as well. Uh, this is a to-do list thing for me too. And I know from doing this at work that these are just really easy things to do that save me time on the job. A metrics document. So this isn't mandatory, but I find this is really helpful to keep track of the numbers across your uploads um, because then you have a place to record notes as well. So maybe you worked like many days on this one video and it didn't do too well, or maybe you did really well. Like those are things you want to note, like how much time you're spending and how they're doing. Did it get a ton of engagement? Did it like get a ton of views? Did it maybe get not as many views, but a ton of engagement? Like note all those things so that you know what's working from you for you and for your uploads so that you can keep learning and like optimizing your content. A brainstorm document. I love having a running brainstorm doc. Um, I prefer using uh, Jamboard from Google Drive because I can basically use that anywhere, whether I'm on desktop or laptop or mobile, and it's virtual post-its, and it's great. Um, so whether I'm sewing or watching TV or doing whatever, if I come up with an idea for a video or for a piece of content, I can just pop it in there. June. We're going to move on now, campers, to June. This is where we get experimenting. You have a refresh brand and workflow. Now it's time to gently experiment with your YouTube channel and platforms and see what works for you. Again, these are not musts. They are suggestions because if you vary up your feed and you make use of these features, it could help you in the algorithm. No promises, but it could. So here are new content ideas you can experiment with. Shorts, that is a newer YouTube format, but it's pretty similar to others on other platforms. So for YouTube, it is a video under 60 seconds filmed vertically and you use hashtag shorts in the description or the title. And it's, it could be a way to boost your channel if you want. Some people have had them go viral. Some people have seen no growth, but I say definitely try it out, see if it works for you. So the benefit of the other benefit of all this is that short form video is getting really popular across other platforms, right? Like Instagram has reels. TikTok is already out there. If you already made this piece of content for shorts or for TikTok, just paste it, copy paste it, AKA just repost the same stuff. See how it does. And also don't forget to add captions. Not only is it really crucial for accessibility, it really ups your view time as well. YouTube tags. So I talked about tags earlier as far as just getting them in order, but I really think you should use this period to experiment with these two and really note what's working, what isn't. There are plenty of tag generators out there and I'll link to some of them in the description. But my biggest tip is what are the tags, successful videos in your interest area? What are they using? What are those videos using? Use those if you can. And if you don't know what they are, 
You can see them through vidIQ, the free Chrome extension. Timing. If you don't already have post timing locked, this is the time to test that out. So when I say timing, I mean what time you post your video and what day you post it. So sometimes, you know, if, if you aren't seeing a ton of success with success you want to see, vary it up, try different things, um, and note what you feel like is working and what isn't. Video length is very similar. You might already have this perfected. The platform has changed, ebbed, and flowed. So maybe if you're seeing stuff that used to do really well, not do as well, tweak the timing. See if that's working. Like if you have a one hour video and you feel like maybe you want to cut it out into like 15 minute interviews, intervals, try that. Uh, I think the big thing is test what's working for video length and see what works for you and also be willing to experiment with that later down the road too as the platforms keep changing. Live streams. This is not just a YouTube thing, but I think it's a just one more way to bring people, your community into your creative space and to see your content and feel connected to your content. I think that's actually really crucial going forward in these spaces. People wanna know that you're human. People wanna know like the ins and outs and they wanna feel like they're talking to you. You don't have to do that to be successful. Um, but I just, I really think that varying up your feed gives fans another way to consume your content and it can be fun. Um, whether it's just popping on, you know, on Instagram live while you were cleaning your sewing machine or something else, just have fun with it and try it. July, we're into the prepping space. So what have we done already? We've revamped your brand. You've experimented and now it's time to prepare for August for cozy. So this may seem like a lot of work still, but it honestly is all set to make August easier on you. I would say consider July the multi-use tool that you can use later on. It's meant to save you time so that you can stress less. So do the work now, stress less August. We good? We ready? Okay, so this month's to-do list. Polish your branding. So we experimented in June with your branding and maybe you realize that you need to tweak some stuff or maybe you have brainstormed other ways that you would just want to make it better and more engaging. Do that now. Like use this month to do all that so that you don't have to rebrand after Cozy. You don't want to rebrand after a big event when you have a boom in followers. Prep share lines. So share lines is just the copy that you use to accompany sharing a link or photo on social media. Do yourself a favor and make a copy paste document of that now so that you don't have to stress about that during cozy so that you can literally copy paste. Tune in now for this DIY video on blah, blah, blah. You can have all of that ready and the right character length and using the right hashtags and depending on what you're, you're posting to have that ready now. Because again, it's just one less thing you have to worry about um, come, you know, August and you're having to upload everything. SEO research. I talked a little bit about this earlier, but search is key. SEO stands for search engine optimization. This is why your brand needs to be, you know, on lock, why you need to have the branding make sense and be consistent. This is why you need to spend time with tags and looking at what works for you because you should now know, looking at your metrics, how you could better hone your keywords that you're using in your description, in your share lines, in your tag space. This is where that knowledge and that work is going to come into play. Get those perfected over the summer or winter so that, that can benefit you when it comes time for cozy and beyond, really. Engage. Don't forget to spend time with your community and in the comments. I know it's an extra step, but I also think if you aren't having fun in the community, then what are we doing this for? So I say like, this shouldn't be a stressful step. It's just a reminder, engage with your community, have fun with your community. If you are feeling stressed about Cozy and about your uploads, this is the time to tune in to that family of costumers and say, hey, I'm feeling stressed. Let's like, how are y'all feeling? What are some ways we can get through creativity blogs? What are some learnings that you've had over the summer about your video content, your creative content? Have fun, 
see how people are talking about similar content to yours so that you feel like you're still, you know, staying up to date on it. Um, engaging is really critical for you to feel, I think, energized as you keep going. <sighs> and now we're to August. This is a big one. It's cozy month. And you've prepped all summer or winter for this. So here are the things you'll want to remember after the stress and anxiety of cozy weekend ebbs away. This month is focused on growth. Uh, this, this is not just for cozy, but beyond. Cozy is only going to be the beginning. I think that this is really how you should view it. Keep creating, keep engaging, be ready for that. And I think also don't forget to keep having fun because we're supposed to be here for fun, right? So your August checklist is stuff that you're probably already going to do. But I just want to remind you that these are important, critical things for branding, as along with community building. Reply to your comments. Um, I think prioritizing this, I know you're going to be really tired after Cozy Weekend. Prioritize this, though, to do this as quickly as possible. Um, swiftly replying to folks keeps your engagement up. But it also, it's not just a numbers thing. It keeps people excited about what you're doing. It builds excitement. It builds loyalty. And if you can't do it the day of because of whatever reasons, definitely try to get to it within the next 48 hours. Just like work your way through your comments because you want to be able to have people know that you're there, you're active in your space. Um, and I feel like that will help probably have those returning subscribers, those returning viewers. Shout out your fans. Did you have all-star comments during your premiere or live stream? Shout them out in the video if you can or in future content because it's just a great way to not only thank people for positive questions and insight, but to reinforce the positive behavior you want to see from your community. Um, you know, as much as we all like to talk about trolls and how frustrated we are with them, that kind of reinforces that we give attention to negative people. And I think reminding folks that we're here for the positive, that we're here to support each other, but also support a community of people who are down to be positive is a great step. Clear CTAs. CTA is a call to action. You probably already are doing this. You're probably already telling people at the end of your videos to like, subscribe, and share. But if you aren't, get that down now. Clearly tell people what you need them to do. And be consistent about that in every video and every way that you're talking about that. Be clear in your CTAs. Keep creating. Don't stop now. Feel the power of queen in your bones. Keep it going. Use the energy and excitement of that community weekend to keep it moving and keep new subscribers excited about what comes next. And you know what? Honestly, kind of have an idea of what you want to do after Cozy Weekend as far as content. It can be a casual, just live stream of you drinking tea and recovering. It can be anything, you doing your mending. I don't care. I just think that you should keep going and not have too big of a gap of content after Cozy. <sighs> okay, campers, that's orientation for brand camp. Are you ready? Do you feel prepared for the path ahead? For the hiking trails ahead. I hope this has been helpful. I'll link to a blog post uh, where I'll have all this and helpful links uh, for you. So hopefully that'll be useful. I'll put all that in the description. Um, but if I if you have questions, let me know. Like, please leave specific questions in my comments or even DM me. Um, you'll find ways to follow me in my link tree that I will put in the description. Um, ask me questions. I'd love to answer them and help you because I feel like this is work that I do professionally, but I also enjoy it in some ways. So let me dork out, let me nerd out and help you and like help the community do the best that we can do together. And I'm a nerd. So I made this little <laughs> merit badge, <laughs> a digital merit badge. So I, I really went hard on this camp analogy. I'm really sorry, but also not Congrats. Um, this is your brand camp orientation badge. Um, <laughs> I will maybe put a PDF out there or a little JPEG out there for you to have it if you're that nerdy. Um, and maybe I'll do more of these through the summer to like let you know updates, like things that I'm seeing, but left, let me know what you want to see. Like, let me know what's most helpful for you, what questions you have, because I would love to tailor any kind of marketing and branding discussion to your needs. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons. I want to shout out um, my Lizzie Bennett tier subscriber, Agnes Gone, 
If you would like to become a patron, check out Book Hoarding on Patreon. Subscribers at the Lizzie Bennett tier and above get shout outs in my videos. Follow me on all the things for more costume, fun, Jane Austen memes, and marketing tips. I'm book hoarding on Twitter and Facebook and Bianca Hernandez on Instagram. See you next time.